He said, let's go with a uh, corn dish de veil, uh, Alma de Nort. Uh, I was looking for something Portuguese to try yesterday in my Intermarché, and you can see that if the camera will focus. Uh, well, I'll read it to you. It has a uh, azeite composto por azeite uh, refinado e azeite virgem. So it's a combination, and we're going to taste it now, or I'm going to taste it now, of refined oils and of extra virgin as well. It's got lovely packaging, isn't it? Like I said before, with that bit of filigree on the cover there in a traditional Portuguese style, and a beautiful, shiny, look at those glistening olives of different colors. I'm imagining that would have been picked and crushed by the feet of grandmas, you know, covered in corns and dry skin, adding to the flavor and texture. But it's your Portuguese grandma we're talking about. Now, there it is in the glass. Now, when I looked at um, how to taste uh, uh, olive oil, um, you're meant to do it in a, in a blue glass and not and to cover it up so that the aroma doesn't escape. What we're looking for, thanks to olive oil lovers, which began in 2012 with a love, a passion, perhaps even an obsession with olive oil. Is it intense or mild? Is it ripe or green? Is it fresh or does it have defects? I think we could put ourselves through that test. Are we intense or mild? Are we ripe or green? Are we fresh or do we have defects? I'll let you answer that. Right. So ordinarily, you'd put it in a blue, in an opaque glass so you can't see the color. So that doesn't put you off. But I don't really know what colors of olive oil tell me, give me what information. So we'll go with that for the time being. And the first time I tasted olive oil consciously, mindfully, was in Italy when our friend Brab, um, I was there with him. We went and bought a load of, um, it was a stag weekend, and we went and bought some lovely provisions to roast in the outdoor oven in Italy. It was fantastic. And we bought olive oil and he was tasting different kinds of olive oil by pouring them onto the back of his hand. The back of his hand would warm the olive oil and you lick it off the back of your hand. I'm not going to do that because it might go all over the equipment here. But there is the Conch d'Avel olive oil. And I'll tell you more about where this came from because it hasn't been crushed by the feet of grandmas or picked by grandmas. It's been picked by machines and made in a factory um, of some kind. Uh, more about that later. But I can still go ahead and see whether it's intense or mild, ripe or green, fresh or has defects. Let me put it on my hooter right now. Smells like olive oil. And I've got, I've got fresh. I have, I, I'm not getting from this, from this point, I'm getting fairly mild. Yeah, it's not, it's not really uh, intense on the nose. And I would say it's quite green. It's not rounded or, or it's got, she, the, the lady I watched earlier on talked about a banana uh, top note to her olive oil. It's not got those sweet fruit flavors. It's got the harsher fruit flavors. And I'm not getting any defects. I'm not thinking, it's not the equivalent of corked. Okay, so let's have a little sip. And washing it all over the, the inside of the mouth. Mmm. Yes, that guy is drinking olive oil. <laughs> on his good morning Portugal show this morning. Mm, lovely shiny lips. <laughs> Ooh, lovely moisturizer all over my face as well. I won't go out in the sun afterwards because I'll end up with, we're filming this weekend. And if I've wiped olive oil all over my face and then I go out in the intense Portuguese sunshine, I might get um, completely burnt like a lobster uh, more than usual. Now, <clears throat> I've got the phenols on the back of the throat there. And she mentioned this. There is a, the pepperiness that, that, that you will be looking for in an olive oil can burn the phenols, can burn the back of the throat. So she said, um, have something to cleanse your palate standing by. And she was using crisp green apple. I don't have that. I'm going to have to use water. But as we know, they're immiscible substances. So they, it might not even touch the sides of the water. But definitely got that pepperiness on the back of the throat. I need to, another little sip to give you more flavors. It is... It's not too intense. So it's at the mild end, but it's still got that peppery finish. And I would say it's not got it. Uh, it you meant to use virgin olive oil for cooking. You're not meant to, are you? But I would use this one more for cooking than I would on a salad. It's not got a sweetness that I would want in a salad dressing all over my salad. But you could bring that out with, with the citrus part of the salad dressing. So it's got it's got a nice texture. Um, the you know the oiliness, as it were, is is perfect. Um, it's got the pepperiness that you might be looking for, and I imagine that will all be intensified by a little bit of warmth or cooking. But not 
not a, an aliveness and a freshness that I'll be looking for from a from a, to put in to have it raw and to put in, into a salad dressing. So that's my first thoughts of Conch de Vel at Alma de Nort, not crushed by the feet of grandmas or picked by the hands of grandmas, but actually made by Gallo. Would you believe it? Who makes all the other flipping olive oils in the supermarket? So this looks like it's um, an indie brand. It's not well. It might be an indie brand, but it's been bought up by Gallo. And further to, I'm looking at, um, I, I was searching Gallo to tell you uh, what I could about them. And I find on worstbrands.com a Gallo olive oil review. However, it's not the Gallo's for Gallo. Um, it comes out quite well. And why it's called Worst Brands, this site, I don't know. But as a foodie, we're always searching for top quality olive oil. We're so excited when we discovered Gallo olive oil. Its flavor was amazing and the texture was superb. So even though, to be fair, um, you know, when you get to the scale of industrial olive oil, made for the supermarkets. I think things are going to get a little bit um, compromised. You really want to be buying it from a local meal, don't you, a local cooperative. If you have to buy it from a supermarket, it sounds like Gallo isn't so bad, and they may have stopped harvesting at night and killing all the birds in the trees as well, which is something we used to talk about um, a couple of years back. I think they've stopped that uh, harsh practice now. That's, in, of course, if ever they, as a particular company, they were involved in that. But I know some of the industrial scale producers were using like nets and hoovers in the night, and birds were being killed in the trees as when they were picking the olives and crushing them. So if you can, go small scale. Um, if, if the only thing you can get in a supermarket is, is this one made by Gallo or distributed by Gallo, it's not too bad. Um, and I think it was about six euros a bottle. So not, not too bad. But all the oils have gone up, haven't they, in this so-called recent cost of living crisis? Um, well, it is a cost of living crisis. Um, but um, as to why it has happened, I think we can refer to Hayek's earlier comments. Um, it's one minute past nine. How rude of me. Katia is waiting. I think she might have something to say about my olive oil tasting. Let's give her a nice big round of applause.